Greetings, Summit parents, and welcome to our virtual back to school night. Prior to your visits with, with each of your child's teachers, we would like to share some important information about the coming school year. I'd first like to make some introductions. My name is Josh St. John. It is my great fortune to serve as Summit's principal. During this video, we'll also hear from Randy Persley, Summit's assistant principal, and also Megan Culbertson, Summit's Dean of Students. As you know, we are preparing uh, for this school year with three different learning options. The traditional in-school option, the real-time at-home option, which is a very synchronous option to what is happening here in the school building, and our ESACS virtual school option, which is a different option in that it is asynchronous meaning not happening in real time. This evening, we do invite you to walk through your student's schedule. Each teacher has a video posted. It will be posted in a common document on the Summit website. And as a note aside here, ESAC students will receive further information and some communication that will be sent regarding the coming school year. Speaking of the coming school year, we look forward to our first day of school for traditional and real-time students on Wednesday, August the 12th. And for several years now, Summit has been a school uh, with a program called Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. And at Summit, um, our PBIS program is embodied by the acronym SOAR, which stands for Safe, Organized, Accountable, and Respectful. We do make a profound emphasis on teaching our students and our adults modeling uh, what it means to be safe, organized, accountable, and respectful in all areas of our school environment. We would like to take some time uh, to review the required items for all students who will be attending Summit in person this school year. Those required items are a cloth face covering or appropriate surgical mask, a water bottle, hand sanitizer, and earbuds to be used in every class. Please know that teachers will be communicating with parents via email prior to the first day of school with information on the priority items from the school supply list to bring to school on the first day. Please also know that teachers will encourage parents and students to store items not needed for the beginning of school at home until they are needed for activities at school. Summit will permit students to carry book bags to classrooms this year. We hope this will support students with organization and minimize the need for students to return to their lockers throughout the day. Locker use will be optional. And at this time, We'll turn this over to Mr. Persley to review the attendance protocol. Welcome Summit families. Mr. Persley here and I'm going to speak with you about our attendance protocol. A lot of similarities but also a few differences this year with the different learning options. It is the parent's responsibility to call the school attendance line if your student is going to be absent or will be arriving late to school. No change in that. This applies to both traditional in-person learners as well as real-time at-home students. Additionally, parents of students who are enrolled as traditional in-person learners need to call the school attendance line if their student will be attending class from home due to illness, quarantine, or for some other reason. Parents who want to change their initial enrollment selection from real-time at home to traditional in-person need to contact the office at least one school day in advance of the change. Summit schedule, as you've probably heard, we are eliminating the eight period day for a variety of reasons this year. So Summit will be on a block schedule every day. The green and white schedule will repeat. The first day of school will be green. Students will attend their advisory class, followed by green one, green two, green three, green four. And then the second day of school will be white days, but we will start each day with our advisory class. During advisory on the first day of school, students will receive instruction on COVID-19 and SACS 
and Summit's return to school plan, including protocols for our face coverings, washing hands and sanitation, entering and exiting the building, lunch protocol, attendance expectations, and much more. As far as our morning procedures are concerned, we have a few changes. Students riding buses will be released from the buses at 7.27 a.m. to enter through doors 4, 5, and 6. That drop-off time is a little bit later this year. Students arriving via any other mode of transport may enter the building beginning at 7.15 a.m. through door 11. Again, that time has been pushed back as well. Once in the building, students must report to advisory classrooms as soon as possible. There will be an optional pre-packaged breakfast that's available that students can grab and take to their advisory class to eat. All of these procedures and changes are intended to uh, limit or minimize congregation of students uh, in the building in the commons area and such. All students are expected to wash hands and or use hand sanitizer upon entering the building. The school has a number of hand sanitizer stations available, um, mobile stations as well as permanent stations and in all classrooms. Students are expected to bring and wear a cloth face covering at all times when riding the bus, entering and exiting the building, and during passing periods. And we'll provide students with more information on the first day of school. Students will adhere to assigned seating during lunch. Lunch procedures will be taught to all students prior to the first lunch on August 12th. At this point in time, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Summit's Dean of Students, Ms. Culbertson. Hello, Falcon families. This is Megan Colbertson. I am Dummett, Summit's Dean of Students this year, and we wanted to talk about classroom procedures a little bit as things are going to be looking a little bit differently in the classroom as well. First of all, all students are expected to wear a cloth face covering in class whenever social distancing is not possible. Additionally, Cleaning and disinfecting of all touch surfaces will be performed by Summit staff and will occur regularly near the conclusion of each class period, normally around the last five minutes or so. Additionally, in classrooms, students will adhere to assigned seats and will remain in those assigned seats for a period of time. As Mr. Persley referenced the morning entrance procedures, we also have slightly different afternoon exit procedures this year. Students and school will still conclude each day at 2.20 p.m. as usual. Students leaving by the bus will exit doors four, five, six, or seven as soon as possible. Once again, we are discouraging congregating in any capacity to ensure the safety and health of our students. SACS buses will leave the bus lot promptly at 2.27 p.m. In addition, for both our traditional and our real-time students, we are going to be using Zoom in classrooms pretty heavily to be able to ensure participation and community amongst our classrooms. So we did want to establish some, some Zoom norms and expectations. Now, for our traditional students that are going to be attending in class, uh, there are specific Zoom expectations for them. So first of all, students Zooming while in the traditional school setting will be on Zoom, but they will only have one earbud in so that they can hear what's happening in the classroom itself while also hearing the comments of their real-time classmates at home. Students Zooming while in the traditional school will have their computer sound off, their Zoom mute will be on. This helps to eliminate feedback. Student Zooming while in the traditional school must show their full name on the screen in order to be admitted to a Zoom session. This allows our teachers to be able to ensure that they know who is in their Zoom rooms and that they are admitting the correct student. There are also some additional expectations uh, for Zoom for our real-time at-home students that are attending school via Zoom. These students must log in to all Zoom sessions and classes on time and early when possible. These Zoom sessions are going to be taking place simultaneously to the regular class. So our real-time at home students will need to log into the Zoom session for each of their classes at their normal class time. Students' full name must appear on the screen to be admitted into the session. And students must be present for the entire Zoom session and device cameras must be on and the student's whole face must be visible to the peers and teachers so that we can ensure that the correct student once again is attending the Zoom. 
Additionally, for our real-time at home students, students working from home must choose a distraction-free environment, they must be dressed appropriately for school, and they need to sit upright for class. Background Zoom screens may not have any moving images as this sometimes proves to be a distraction. Zoom mute should always be on unless otherwise directed by the teacher. And students are expected to participate in all discussions and be prepared to answer when called on to do so, just like they would if attending in the traditional manner. During class discussions, students are focused and are, do not distract other students or the teacher. We also wanted to point out that teachers may remove students from Zoom sessions for a lack of compliance and the student will be counted absent from class. We do hold our real-time at home students to the same behavioral expectations as our students that are attending school in the traditional manner. Now, finally, Falcon families, we are so thankful to have you and your students with us. Although this year is going to bring with it a lot of unpredictability and a lot of different procedures and different dynamics, we are so excited to be walking through this journey with you. And we are so excited to be able to soar together this year. We are all in this together. Please don't hesitate to reach out to myself, to Mr. Persley, or to Dr. St. John, or to our front office if you have any questions or concerns. We appreciate you. We're glad to have you here. Have a great day, Falcons.